Good evening, and thank you for joining us for another edition of the Two Minute Warning. I'm your host, Perry Busby. The Two Minute Warning is brought to you by the West Side Gazette newspaper, uh, one of South Florida's oldest African-American-owned newspaper that continues to serve uh, the African-American community and tell our stories our way. And joining me tonight is the publisher of the West Side Gazette, uh, Mr. Bobby Henry and my good friend, Mr. David Wright. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? Good evening, Perry. We're, we're, I know I'm terrific and getting better. You know, it's, it's, it's always a pleasure to be here with amongst the living. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Feeling excitedly well tonight. Mm -hmm. Great, you know, great. Perry, before, you, before you go into your, 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 your thing, we were having some experiences, some difficulties, some technical difficulties. Uh, we have a special guest that is supposed to join us. Now, I'm not sure if Miss Anderson is in the studio. Has she made a No, she's not. Okay, I see the producer shaking his head. So, okay, okay. As, as we go through our show, we may have to uh, ad-lib, interject, what pivot. do you call it, David? Pivot. Pivot. We may have to pivot and bring her on uh, as time permits, Okay. Is that well? Okay, great. That's great. That's great. That's great. Okay. Well, let's go. I mean, we we have a waiting audience, waiting some ears, and uh, again, we ask the audience. Uh, this is just not a, a a time to listen. This is a time to participate, and so we encourage you to participate, ask questions, uh, give us your thoughts, uh, because this is a discussion. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, not just a show or a production. And so, uh, Brother David, uh, tell me what's been going on, man. Oh, man, so much has been going on. And you've been tuned in to anything, you know a little bit about everything. Mm, and right. what we found out is, uh, as unfortunate as it, it was, we had a runoff in Georgia. We did have some victory there. Uh, as embarrassing as it may look, we did get mm -hmm. some victory. There. Brother Perry, you and I talked about this a little earlier, and I'm, I'm interested to hear your tale of this story, the two stories. <laughs> well, I, I, before you, <laughs> I'm just get involved with this. Before y'all, before y'all go at this, I, 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 let us remember now. Now, Georgia was one of the reddest states in, in existence. So, so for us to 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 come away with 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 the victory. That's it. I'm not. I'm not going. I'm not going to uh, uh, discount Mr. Football Head, but but <laughs> we we got to understand that that was a that was a red place. So yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Give you a thing. Yeah. No. No. But but it also yeah. uh, you know. But it also reminded us. You know, Bobby. You and I talked about uh, the story behind uh, Hiram Revis. Oh yeah. Right. And how he uh, became Florida's first black elected, uh, uh, what, congressman or senator? Congressman, yeah. Uh, congressman, congressman, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And, and so, uh, but at that time, there were, there, it was Hiram Revis and another gentleman right. uh, who was backed by the white establishment. And blacks then uh, decided that they wanted Hiram Reavers because he spoke for them. They did not trust mm -hmm. uh, the other guy because he came from uh, the support of white establishment. And, and so, you know, I say that to say these things are not new. And at the same time, you still feel disgusted because it ain't new either. You know, haven't we progressed? And I think that's that has been the part of the frustration of many people is that yeah, we are ready to celebrate this as well worth it, but haven't but can we not move on that we are still fighting this stereotypical black 
leader that keeps wanting to get propped up by white America. Mm -hmm. And I just want to add to that, uh, Brother Perry, and, and during those times, you know, a lot of African Americans, black folks were Republican back then. So, mm -hmm. right. right. Yeah. That, that made a little history, but you, you yeah, got something yeah, yeah. you want to say. Right? Yeah, let me let me now, now we got this lady here for a brief time, and, and I, I really want to to bring her on. I and sure. she can't join us. Uh, 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 I don't want to say this guy in her physical in her physical ability, but she's going to speak to us. She is at another engagement uh, in another part of the country. Okay, we're we're we're, we're doing this 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 talk show concerning empowerment and what that means and what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So if we can, uh, Ms. Anderson, are, are, are you available? Are you ready to speak now? I'm here, I'm here. Okay, okay. Now for those of you who may not know Miss Maggie Anderson, if you ever thought about buying black, okay, this she's the originator. So I, <laughs> I don't wanna, you know, I don't, I don't wanna belabor, I don't wanna belabor this. Come, come on, Maggie, so give it to us. Okay, um, I, I I haven't been around, so I'm not sure if you uh, introduced me or not. Um, so I'm Maggie Anderson. I'm a daughter of Liberty City. Um, I'm in Chicago now, um, but I'm I'm always going to be a hometown girl from Liberty City. And uh, my book is called Our Black Year: One Family's Quest to Buy Black in America's racially divided economy. I was born and raised in Liberty City. I love my black people. I left to go to Emory University um, where I also served as a congressional aide to the late great Congressman John Lewis. After college, I went on to law school and business school. I got my JD and my MBA here in Chicago at the University of Chicago where another civil rights icon was also my professor and mentor, Barack Obama. After studying constitutional law under Barack and after fighting for freedom with Congressman John Lewis, I went on to corporate um, where I was able to serve for the first and only black CEO of McDonald's Corporation, Don Thompson. And then after that, uh, just kind of dipping my feet into politics and law and business um, I started to think about how I've quote unquote made it. Um, I've made my, my family and my community proud. Uh, and as much as I was representing my black community, I don't think I was doing nearly enough to reinvest in my black community. So, you know, we talking about what happened with Warnock. I was voting black. I love black. I love my black man. I love looking at y'all right now. Um, I get happy when it's a black coach who makes it to the Super Bowl and uh, the black person gets nominated for the awards. But I was black, um, but I wasn't buying black. So I decided to do something about that. And my husband and I made a commitment that for an entire year, we would buy black only, no matter what the cost, and do so for all the world to see. That year was highly publicized, front pages across the globe. Every major news network covered it. That year was called the Empowerment Experiment. And it was a very, very rough year. Learned a lot that year. Um, sacrificed a lot that year. And it changed my life. So no more corporate, no more law. I'm a 100% freedom fighter. I speak and lecture and preach and teach on buying black, economic justice, economic empowerment. Um, I expose racial inequalities economic inequalities. I expose those big corporations that live off the black consumer dollar and have zero black companies in their supply chains. I expose the economic uh, inequalities that manifest in less than 6% of the businesses in poor, nearly 100% black communities being locally or black owned. I expose and, and educate on the loss of our black hair care industry um, and how most of our big brands are now European, and, uh, French and Dutch owned, and how our beauty supply industry has also been stolen from us. So I'm coming to town in one week, and I'm hoping that you guys would meet me 
at the African American Research Library and Cultural Center on Ciscron Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. We are having a magnificent event, Women of Color Empowerment Institute, uh, led by my good friend Bernadette Norris Weeks, attorney ne Weeks, and uh, my good friends at New York Life are putting this event together, expanding our platform so that we can just get together and talk for real about making America great again for Black people. We were great when we had our businesses and Wall Streets and our banks and our grocery stores. And that's the greatness that we have to bring back. I've spoken all over the world. Go by my website, authormaggieanderson.com or ourblackyear.com. I promise you, I'm the real deal. I just can't do it by myself. Mm -hmm. So if you care about Black people, if you're ready to fight back by buying Black, if you're ready to take back our black hair care industry, if you're ready to demand more justice and equity and diversity from these big businesses and retailers, you'll be at this event. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I will feed your mind, but we will feed your body too. It's at six o'clock, it's gonna be free food, it's a free event, and a daughter of Liberty City will be there and I'm coming home. I'm just hoping that you guys will welcome me. Very good, Maggie. And, and I, I know you got to go. And, and, and with any struggle, with any any involvement with doing something for a cause, I, I know it comes at a cost. And, and I will commend you for uh, the struggle. Now, now I have a question to ask you: How I, has this affected you? Um. Well, it's it's been a, a painful journey and a depressing journey. I will tell you that, you know, my family gets threatened. Um, it, it's been sometimes more difficult dealing with our own people than it is dealing with outsiders. The lackluster response from our community, we know what we're supposed to do. And, you know, I get the same old responses. Well, black businesses give us poor service and I can't find any. And it's like, did you look? When was the last time you looked for a black drag cleaner, the one you assume that doesn't exist? I have a black drag cleaner. When was the last time you looked for a black plumber or, 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 or just whatever? It should be first, it should be natural, it should be like breathing. Our dollar stays in our community for six hours. Asian Americans keep their dollars among their banks and retailers and professionals for 28 days. My Jewish friends keep their dollar for 21 days, six hours used to be years during segregation, six hours now. And a lot of that has to do with racism and economic terrorism. They were stringing up our black men for owning businesses. All of that is true. But no one is stopping all of us right now from starting an account at One United Bank, as I'm talking to you. No one is stopping you from making sure every time you go to any McDonald's or any fast food restaurant that it is black owned because there are plenty of them, but we're not. So that was really the, the hardest part of this journey, our own people making excuses not to be free. And as much as I devote most of my um, denying the naysayers, fighting for our people and using all of my smarts and soul to defend and uplift black people, uh, it's the saddest part. I love doing that. I find joy in that. What brings me sadness is when my own people aren't ready, when they make excuses for the lack of empowerment in our community. They owe us, they absolutely owe us. It's with our blood and our brilliance that we built up most of the big brands in this nation and that we've uh, given our, our blood for this country. They absolutely owe us, but we owe us too. Dr. King died asking us to put our money in black owned banks. He said he wanted to bank in movement. And look at where we are now. 120 banks then and only 19 black owned now. And that's our fault. So I need people who are ready to step up and do four or five little things now so that we can be great again. That that's what I'm looking for. So the struggle is is not about finding black owned businesses. The struggle is not about white folks threatening me and saying horrible things about me and, and my family online. The horrible part is that. The saddest part is seeing my own people unnecessarily 
struggle. Because if we were to put our money with us and show solidarity and unity every day, everything would be different. Okay, you, you, and thank you so very much. I, I see one, one of our one of our viewers, uh, Ms. Hankerson is asking, she says, I'm so proud of you. Is there um, a black business? So, so. I, I didn't hear the last part and I really have to go after this. Y'all just come see me next week. Okay. Uh, 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 Sandra, you can make sure you pick up the flyer for us because the URL to register is just so long. Um, but it's six o'clock oh, yeah. the the right there on Sixth Brook in Fort Lauderdale. It's gonna be a beautiful day. Like I said, I'm a daughter of Liberty City. This is your hometown girl. Please come show me some love. I've worked real hard to get all these sponsors to put this event together. It's going to be beautiful, but it's nothing without you. Please just make that sacrifice next Thursday, December 15th, and, and be there at 6 p.m. But I'll answer the question real quick. I didn't, I didn't hear it. No, no, no. She, she was asking if there was a black directory. And I wanted to say something to that. Every black newspaper should be a black business directory. So That's for true. those black businesses who are out there, and you're not advertising in a black newspaper, I'm not taking it away. I'm not taking anything away from Right. You know. That's absolutely right. We need strong black banks, chambers, and press. That's it. We're, we're not, we are never going to be, we can only be as strong as our black chambers, banks, and press. Um, so yes, every, we should be able to just pick up our black paper and see um, all of the great black businesses in our, in our community. I would refer you to your local black chamber. You do have um, um, a black chamber there in South Florida, a couple. Um, and if you come to my website, there are some tips on how to find black businesses. Again, that site is authormaggieanderson.com and ourblackyear.com. Um, so there, it's, it's, it's much easier now than you think. Um, I, you know, but there's no, no, there's no one perfect centralized directory. I like the directory for the U.S. Black Chambers. So you can download the app, uh, the United States Black Chambers, um, USBC. That's what you'll look for in the app store. And they have a few hundred thousand black owned businesses nationwide. Um, but locally, just uh, check out your black chamber. Um, they do have a directory on their website. I got to go. I got to go. I love you guys. Thank you for having me on tonight. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie, for taking out. Okay, and I'll see you all next week. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank bye bye you. now. <clears throat> okay. Okay, Maggie. Here we go. Now, this event, please don't let this event uh, deter you from coming. Uh, it's open to everybody, everybody, not just uh, those who may have some money. This is open to everybody. So come on out and, and support this and learn yeah. more. Can, can we put the flyer back up mm -hmm. as, as we talk about this event? Because we want you to share this with all your social medias. Uh, all your neighbors and your church members, um, and I, even our young people that has that Nipsey Hustle mindset, God yeah. bless and respect the late Nipsey Hustle. But this is some of the things he talked about and shared with our young people as well about buying in your own community and owning property in your community and establishing those businesses there. So these are some things that are central to our, the core of who we are as a people. And uh, even though we have some disparities on how we deal with each other, she mentioned that the services could be slow and, and, and some of our mom and pop organizations, that's okay. It was a time and that was the only place we could go. And we know the food was slamming, it was good. So we have to continue to have that intentional mindset that if we're gonna get out of this struggle, it, it, it's paramount. We have to support one another. Yeah. And, and please do not allow uh, uh, the separatist mentality to come in. This is for everybody who look like us. Now, you got a girl from Liberty City. If you know anything about Liberty City, you know damn well that she's down. So this is open up to everybody, from Sis Trump, from the Manners, from Poking Beans, poking beans oh, you know, everybody. So do not, do not be dissuaded uh, about anything. So get there and come on out and let's learn what it's going to take for us to be in. What the hell empowerment mean anyway, David? Well, empowerment basically <laughs> means having the knowledge and utilizing it to the fullest advantage. So empowering someone is, is part of an education process, but now we have knowledge 
and we're able to apply that knowledge in a way that can bring financial success mm -hmm. into our community, into our house. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Perry, you 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 can't you a PK kid, so so when we talk about empowerment, what, what does that mean to you? Uh, empowerment for me is 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 really developing a discipline to sustain uh i mean i mean just just like that generator uh i mean it's constantly rotating because it has to keep power moving and so i think for us one of the things uh and whether we call it the vestiges or the of slavery or or or, or whatever it is uh you know um we are persistent we as a people are persistent mm -hmm. no doubt about it uh I, I i just think for us we have to learn as david says to begin to put that into one direction you know that for us that has really you know sort of been you know uh part and parcel of uh, of our history i mean we talk about black wall street uh I mean that was black that was black unity at its best and it wasn't just in and it wasn't just in Tulsa it was in multiple places so we have the ability and I, I think the ultimate question is we have to ask ourselves then why are we not committed to it mm -hmm. Because as Dr. Anderson said, I mean, I and I can very much agree with it as a black professional. And, and again, I, I think sometimes we we tend to let some of those of us who who have that privilege sort of extend it. But I think that I think that was a very salient question to ask yourself. I mean, yes, I'm. I, we all want to be the best for our race, but how do we invest back into that race that helped us? be this person who we are and it has to be done with intention i mean we have this show because it we said we wanted to be intentional about these messages and i think uh, I, I i thank god for dr anderson and again i say to everyone even if you not uh the, even if you don't have a desire to to start a business let's come and see what it takes to support a community <laughs> that has an economic you know, that's, <laughs> well, that's something i always share with especially our new startups we're starting to see a lot of young african-american men and women start their own business and just and it's like birthing a child it takes a lot of labor and pain yeah Oh, my <laughs> sisters that's out there doing that thing. Yeah. Love it to death. Mm -hmm. But just mm -hmm. like we do shower, baby showers, uh, we need to shower our new business. Yeah. We exactly. need to right. go out exactly. and support full fledged. I mean, the grand opening, we should be there consistently. We should know how to go out of our way to continue to support that business especially in the first year yeah well they're gonna have a grand opening but you know how consistent can we go to that business and, and give what we call constructive understanding constructive understanding constructive understanding is constructive we know you're growing we know you're just getting off the ground yeah your your, your payroll system might not be all in tune so people might not want to work for you if they're not getting paid <laughs> but we do know you know depending on the type of business Sometimes it takes a while for all the technology to work properly. Okay, but we have to be patient with that. We have to be tolerant with that because as a baby, mm -hmm. baby gonna spit up on you. Yeah, man. Uh, it's gonna do some Get things nasty. that you're not really comfortable with up front, but you don't just throw that baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, you know, you know, and then you, 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 and Perry, you bring up some 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 good points. Now, I, I I don't take anything away from any black business. It's a struggle. But my thing is, what I have learned over the 51 years being in, in, in the newspaper, it, it, it's, we find it extremely difficult when, when we take our hard-earned monies to go advertise in another source. You know, when we spend our monies elsewhere, 
uh, to to try to bring people to our to our business, you know. And and, and nine times out of ten, black funeral homes gonna do black business. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Black barber shops gonna do black heads. Black beauty shops gonna do black nails. But when we take our our our, our, our efforts uh, somewhere else, it depletes it depletes the source. You know, uh, Maggie says something about. Uh, 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 black folk not willing to do this. And I, I thought of Sojourner Truth, I mean, Harriet Tubman, when she pulled her gun out and said, no, nah, Negro, either you coming or you gonna die. You know, so right. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, we, we long since passed those days. No, we no, we're not. Bring the gun. Bring the gun. There are two important words mm -hmm. uh, that I think have been brought up that we really have to. Uh, if we're gonna pull the gun, let's pull the gun on intention. On to, and intention. Right. And if we're gonna pull right. the gun, it, 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 we have to be disciplined. Yes. To understand right. the purpose and why we're doing what we're doing, exactly. we can't right. be all over the place. You know. So if you're mm -hmm. intentionally hard about supporting black business, yes. Then you have to be disciplined about it. You can't be supporting them today and not tomorrow and back back and forth and back and forth. Mm -hmm. uh, they did this for one whole year. And we gotta know that's amazing. And together. And the, the, if if you go back in, if if we go back in and, and, and listen to her story and, and, and read her story, they suffered. Mm -hmm. Her was threatened. She developed a debilitating sickness. You know, and I, I was hoping that she would talk about that, but she didn't. So come out Thursday and hear her story to see just how beat down they were. But they continued to do it. And that's what mm -hmm. we have to understand. It, it ain't nothing, excuse me, pardon my uh, English. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, come on, man. Come on. Come on, y'all. You know, and, and it's, it's, no. it's time now. If, Perry, the situation you brought up concerning uh -huh. joy. If we haven't learned anything, mm -hmm. anything about what transpired, we better take a look at George. Right. Mm -hmm. And I would also add uh, uh, Alabama. You know, Alabama. we can put the gun down, but we we, we say no, get off the bus. Yeah. I ain't gonna, ain't gonna yeah. get on that bus. No. You know, yeah. we're gonna yeah. we're gonna boycott this yeah. program until yeah. you do right by. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but guys, speaking of that though, you know, one uh of Georgia, one story that I, I, I don't know if you heard, and, and I heard it briefly, uh, but they were saying that when they looked at what happened in, in the general election in November, a lot of blacks stayed home under the pretense that they felt like no way anybody was going to vote for Herschel. And, my, and, 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 and in some ways that sounds ludicrous because how could we take such a position? And again, it goes back again, as I say, to helping our... We have to help our community understand how significant politics is to their surroundings. Because it never takes a holiday, but for them to think that, oh, I'm not going to vote because I, I know Warnock has this because nobody could vote for anyone like that. They were surprised. And they said that they uh, there were at least, uh, I want to say, uh, at least a good 75,000 people that they identified who had not voted in the general who were among those who were coming back to vote in, in the runoff. Yeah, but then, then the question, then the question I have is, uh, um, what, what, what was it? What, what, what is it that would make you think, or or or, or lull you to sleep, that you know that that you know, all of a sudden this 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 gentleman of a darker hue uh, uh, will will have a a walk right into this this the Senate. What what has lulled us to sleep to think that? And nobody gonna vote for Hershey Moore. Are you out your rabbit mind? You know, if he if I'm sorry, I don't I don't want to ramble or take, but if he was the forefront, the forerunner 
for what the Republican Party had for Warnock, then what makes us think that they're just going to lay down and let 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 Warnock just walk into the Senate? Have we been low sleep to that degree? That's a good question. And, uh, apparently, there were what did you say? Perry said the five guys people in Georgia who just did not believe that this was for real. Um, yeah. so I have to never underestimate uh, the powers of the opposing party when it comes to uh, putting up, you know, their shenanigans and uh, people that they can control in, in order to win a seat. So, you know, at, at this point, uh, the outcomes are what they are. Uh, I think we learned a great lesson from this. I would say that those individuals that didn't think it would be this close uh, now have a different opinion and a different understanding of what these elections are all about. Uh, and the importance of understanding every time those polls are open, <laughs> we got to go vote. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Regardless of who the candidates are, right. we have to participate. We have to be willing participants in every election and, I, I if I can, and, and if i can bring this home uh because we have a similar incident here in florida that is affecting where i am now i'm in i'm in leon county uh we lost the state senate seat in this area lorraine osley who had been the democrat they ran a republicans ran a similar candidate in this area a young former florida state football player by the name of corey simon and the african-american community uh was solidly not behind mr simon uh and he was again a pick of uh, of the gop and and i will say that we did reach out to mr simon's campaign to have him come on to at least speak to us because i think that uh to have someone now in a seat that now oversees uh an hbcu a storied HBCU institution in the state, FAMU, as well as as well as Florida State. Uh, I think I think African American alumni of Florida State should at least be interested, as well as the alumni of FAMU, in what Mr. Corey's intents are, especially those at FAMU. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he ran a similar campaign. He did not speak he did not go out of his way to speak to any any black organizations he he stayed in safe confines and again like herschel he did have a few african americans to support him but they their hope was really to get uh at least three percent of the black community uh in leon gadsden and uh washington county and to their efforts, that's what they got. Yeah, and I, I, want, I want us to, 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 to bring this back under the, the, the umbrella of, of, of tonight's topic, mm -hmm. empowerment. Mm -hmm. But before we do that, sure. go ahead. Perry, this truly speaks to the state of politics in the state of Florida. Uh, mm -hmm. Because if we've seen this play out in Georgia, now we're seeing something similar. And I, I can't speak directly to this position in, in, in mm -hmm. the Senate. I don't know uh, Mr. Corey. I don't know what his political background is or makeup is. So I, I'm not speaking in that area. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is when we see athletes and people that don't have any kind of political background fall into this uh, place where they are all of a sudden now uh, the most popular candidate amongst our opposition, then it kind of has to help us uh, go, let's go back to lock and load and to say, hey, uh, how do we combat, how do we uh, 
strategically strategize mm -hmm. of, of our candidate and, and getting them in the forefront uh, to get that type of support that's needed. And I think we need to look at it throughout the entire state, just as Georgia has had to do. Uh, we had a candidate in Georgia that helped galvanize that whole state by running for government. Mm -hmm. uh, but she just had a lot of fire within her to bring that state together to understand what their rights were as, as voters and to get the entire state fired up. And, and Florida truly needs a firing up, especially the Democratic yeah. Party and, and, and the Democratic leadership in the state of Florida. So I, I question them as to where do we go from here? And I know we need to segue into something else, but no, 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 that's, that, that's a point and topic. I think we're, we're really going to have to dive a little deeper into it. I asked the question last week, and, I, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to ride this for, for a moment. Uh, how do we develop leaders to fight that cause? And, 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 and so it resonated within me. Okay, Bobby. Okay, what's happening? You, you, you have to have uh, understand that you in, in any, any situation, you have two sides. Okay, you have those that are infected and those that are affected. The infected know, they know what's going on. They know the, the turmoil and the pain and the suffering. And the affected, we see it. So therefore, if we're to have any movement or any, 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 any uh, addressing of this, we got to be infected and affected of which we are. But it seems like we don't want to admit to it. But that's, that's empowerment. What does empowerment mean? Yeah. 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 That's a good segue. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when we go back to this event coming up on the 15th, mm -hmm. obviously you want to get out there so that you can really get your full understanding of a person that empowered themselves to go through that full year ordeal of staying disciplined to their cause. Um, you know, I, I just have to say it. I, I fall into the category of not always being as as disciplined as I, I should be. Sometimes convenience overrides my discipline button, mm -hmm. and uh, I find myself giving in. Uh, but to be totally intentional going forward, we're, we're, we're embarking on a new year, twenty twenty three, and if, if we can just look at where we've come from, what we've gone through in the past two years this should be inspiring enough that if we we've survived up until now yeah, yeah, yeah. then uh it's truly a blessing and secondly since we've uh, uh, survived mm -hmm. we should have our mindset on thriving it took a discipline to survive through covid and it's going to take a discipline for us to thrive in 2023. Yeah. Yeah. Perry, you you on yeah, no, I was just listening and agreeing, agreeing with uh, David. Um, you know, uh, what is that uh, Chinese symbol uh, of chaos and opportunity that within chaos, there's always opportunity. And, you know, and so we have to, you know, I, I think uh, uh, I used to hear my daddy say in preaching, we have to learn not to major in the minor. And that and that and that takes a different, uh, you know, sort of thing, because, again, when you say you're infected, uh, that uh, infected uh, affects your ability to think and, and strategize. And so we, we do have to, uh, I, I think, in this take it in this time, be sober and, and look at these opportunities. And so I, I look forward. I hate I won't be there. But I do look forward to to the outcome of this. We we just lost power. I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear us? I can okay. hear you. Okay. Okay. Can the audience? Yeah. Can the audience hear us? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Miss Hankerson, she she brings up a comment. If we can put that on the screen, can we see that? Okay. I think they went and pulled the trash out to vote over. <laughs> and we voted in record numbers for a midterm race. We won. 
we have to do better, do a better job getting to those who may be hanging out on the corners to vote, even if it's filling out their absentee ballots on the street corner and mail it in for them. <laughs> Laugh out loud, I don't know if it would be, <laughs> it would be legal. <laughs> the idea that we have to meet them where they are. And Ms. Hankerson, you're absolutely right. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah. yeah, We have come to realize, and we were talking about this, if you don't want to go under the trees, then go somewhere else. Let us who go under the trees go under the trees. But we got to bring them uh, into the fold. You know, it's going to take all of us. And Miss Miss McCleary, I, we are so uh, elated that you are still fighting for the cause. And I know that your group of those five young ladies, <laughs> you know, are right there with you. You said teaching, education, knowledge. Uh, knowledge is power. I agree uh, that, in my opinion, leads to empowerment. I'm just saying, you, you, you're, right. you're absolutely right. So, yeah, yeah. And for those of you who don't know, uh, she is a soldier, you know, uh, in, in the battle. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's, yeah, yeah. So, and a yeah. national soldier. In a national soldier. <laughs> There was something else I, that we wanted to. to, to I, I, I just I'm gonna I'm digress and go someplace else. I, I, I just I just learned something new uh, on yesterday. Uh, my nephew Millie Lou, who's a rapper, right? Yeah, he's a rapper, mm -hmm. and y'all know Marcus uh, Shorty Fat. We call him. Uh, he gave me a he gave he sent me a text and said uh, Uncle Bobby uh, in the text, and he and he had this. The screenshot of an article that we read in the paper, uh, and, and and so he said, "You just made uh, the shade room." Now I don't know what the shade room is. I'm 67 years old. I'm not familiar with the shade room. He said, "So I texted him back and said, Marcus, what is the shade room?" But anyway, I did some further research. The West Side Gazette's article called "Hunted" concerning. Uh, Wendy Williams and Kelvin Herner, her husband. Man, we we are all over the the uh, uh, the shade room and, and the internet and other places. <laughs> and, and when I spoke a few minutes ago, we had over, and I, we are proud of this. You know, we we are a a black publication of some old heads. Uh, we were up to sixty nine thousand likes for that article. Wow. Yeah. So I want to commend Kevin Cowens for writing the article and in view and in interviewing Kevin Hunter, uh, giving a side to a story that's really uh, entrenched in, in, in a whole bunch of stuff as it pertains to black people. So we are engaging conversation. And I am so elated over Mr. Cowens and Mr. Hunter and to those who are familiar with Shade Yard, for us to get 69,000 likes, <laughs> Shade Room, Shade, you see what I'm saying? Thank you. <laughs> shade Room, 60, 69,000 likes. Man, come on. So we're, we're trying to move forward, but it's going to take all of us. I'm, I, and I just yeah. had to throw that plug out there. Yes, they yeah. throwing up that shade. It throwing <laughs> They showed the machine. They vibed and broke the internet, y'all. It was a <laughs> so Terry, what you say? That's cool. I said Bobby broke the internet. Now, <laughs> you're laughing and you're joking, but here we go. Empowerment. Y'all just bear with us. Prayerfully. Exactly. You're gonna see something new uh that comes from the West Side Gazette. That's that young folk can get into all right so that's just a hint so yeah we're working on that and we have to do that i mean we have some exceptional young folks out there that we that needs that environment we need to be able to dialogue with them and share their ideas and their mindsets mm -hmm. on different things uh, uh, again i knew nothing about the shape the shape will be and it, it empowered me not to 
want to find out more and, and <laughs> uh, see if they got some lemonade. <laughs> 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 another thing, another thing. On Tuesday, Broadway School Board has an opportunity to cleanse itself up and make some history. You know, so I, I, I know that there has been several conversations concerning our Broward County School Board and the corruption that exists there. And, and so uh, there are those who uh, have decided that maybe it's time for the school board to open. We're going to need everybody to get involved with this. Everybody. Westside Gazette has been on the forefront writing articles pertaining to the corruption and to other dastardly deeds that have been done under the blanket of uh, the school board. So, and as some of our viewers are saying, they're looking forward to this reveal. I think uh, Ms. Ms. Samuel says she's looking forward to the reveal, and I think we all are. We're, we're like leaning in, leaning in forward on this one. Uh, so we definitely want to invite as many people as possible uh, yeah. on Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. There's a there's an item time certain time certain at one o'clock, but if you can get there at ten o'clock and sit through it. Uh, and let's take back our educational system. I ended an article in this week paper with the quote that was written into law with Brown versus the Board of Education in Topeka, Kansas, when it said with all deliberate speed, it depends on who's clocking that speed before things happen. So we need to be mindful uh, that our school board is where the investment of our future lives in our students. And, and I, I, I hear the, the conversation about uh, taking it back, but I, I, I beg to say, no, we want to sell it. We want it to be at its best. Mm -hmm. We want it to be at its peak with the inclusion of all the qualified individuals that make up this community. Our school board should look like it. And uh, I think it's important that we acknowledge those people that's been working in our school system all these years that are qualified to do the job and vet those that are, are, are seeking new exactly. positions so that we make sure we're bringing the most qualified people into service in this community. And as uh, my family always says, it's all about the kids. All you about know, the we kids. must yeah. have one of the, uh, education is paramount when we talk about the system. It has to run efficiently, effectively. We have to have the uh, equity amongst all the schools across all the districts. You know, that's that, and they sound like a farce, but, but that should be on the number one the top of the agenda. I agree. I yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I, let's get out of support. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see that that uh, our producers are pointing to the, the clock on the wall. So we, we, we're getting there. So what, what's on what's on your what's on your, your tablet? You know, I, I brought up, uh, I mean, Deion Sanders has been in the news. Yeah. Um, you know, and there are so many pros and cons uh, about. His decision, uh, but uh, hats off. I think uh, brother's done a remarkable job in bringing light on HBCUs and the quality there. And, and uh, you know, I think I think it's important that we support whatever decision he makes. But there are more than one Dion out there. Yeah. There are others that are as, as, as the script say. There's a ram in the bush. There's ram somebody the bush. ready to come up behind Dion. And do yeah, hopefully even greater things for a, a, a variety of HBCUs, not just one. So uh, again, we have to uh, think things through. I think we should be kind of slow to speak, you know, mm -hmm. quick to listen and slow to speak on some of our, our, our outpouring against one another, and really look at the whole picture, the total picture. Perry, what's your thought coming from Beaumont, Texas? <laughs> Well, I'm, I, 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 again, I just want to uh, be a little tongue in cheek about this, but I, I, I wholeheartedly support uh, Dion's decision. I mean, uh, because you have to understand the sport of the sport that he's operating in and the business 
of that sport and that was a business decision i mean i think for anyone to think that he would not think of as jay-z said i'm a business man you know that he is the business <laughs> and, and so uh you know uh i think uh it would be hard for 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 many of us if offered that knowing that we had the skill the abilities and everything that comes to bear with that uh not to accept that opportunity uh and and the tongue and cheek yeah, part about it is i'm saying i'm saying i saw more people upset about dion than i saw people upset about when they elected an official to a seat and then they got up and left and went to another one you know, it, for, Again, for me, for me and some minor stuff. Right. Yeah, for me, it's a it's a it's a bittersweet thing. Yeah, of course, uh, uh, I would I would enjoy uh, just wallowing in the history of greatness, like a, a Alonzo J. Gaither or a Eddie Robinson or a Big Hands Johnson, or, you know, of those legendary coaches uh, at these HBCUs that uh, during that time you 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 couldn't go to uh, a PWI you know that was unheard of so it was a bittersweet moment for me but when it got right down to it I had to look at what Dion had done for our HBCUs and where he has brought us and I got dog it we got to take it to the next level we can't just say okay we just can't we can't okay Dion you even did your thing we know you prime we know you're behind from Fort from Fort Myers, the small town over right. there. Yes, I, we know you. Oh, yeah. yeah, so we, oh, we right. know, yeah we know you. So now we got to step up and do our part. Yeah, yeah, right. All right, let's wind this thing up. All right. So how 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 y'all want to end? Excuse me. How do you want to end the show? <laughs> <laughs> you want? How bad do you want it? Nah, we'll wait. We'll wait. We'll wait. We'll wait. Okay, well, we'll we, we started we'll wait. in empowerment. Yeah, we, we that, that was the show. Well, okay, how bad, do you want, how bad do you want empowerment? Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, you brought it up here. How bad do you want it? <laughs> um, how bad do I want it? Uh, I, I, really, I, I really hate that I can't uh, be there this Thursday, although I'm going to be in Broward next week for a little while, uh, for a few days, I won't be there, uh, Thursday. Uh, but Bobby, you know, you, you heard me talk, uh, I heard Dr. Anderson say something that I know, uh, and, and I've dealt with, and that is when you see yourself giving to a community in its needs and you and you see that there's something that you can do to see that people sometimes don't either maybe they don't understand but sometimes their response is not inviting to you as someone who sees this and and to hear her talk about being able to endure that you know not not being accepted from in, in the community in which you're trying to help sometimes uh i i understand that uh but just like dr anderson i'm committed to waking up every day trying to figure out how i can assist and not giving in to the idea that okay well this just won't work i refuse to give up I refuse to give up on my community. Uh, I am committed to giving my skills and my talents in whatever way possible. That's how bad I want. Brother David, well, my opinion moving forward, knowing that this event is coming up, uh, how bad do I want it? Well, I want to promote, 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 and get as many people out as possible so that we can get this information. So that we can empower ourselves to really focus on how we're going to support our community, support our black businesses in whatever your individual way is. You know, we don't all do everything the same way. We don't all look alike, uh, but we still have this hue about us. And it's important that we support one another. So 
how bad do you want it? I'm going to promote and be there so that I can strategically determine how I'm how 2023 looks for for me as a wee by play. Mm -hmm. Okay, how bad do I want it? First of all, I, I want us to those who are going step outside of your circle and bring somebody else with you. I I, I don't want to I don't want us to miss an opportunity to get the entire community involved. I want it bad enough to say, everybody come out. It don't cost you nothing. Come out, go to the door. If they don't want you there, tell them, let them turn you around when you get there. But go there. It's about us. And the only way that we can begin to even think about overcoming, we have to be inclusive. So I want it so bad that I'm going to tell everybody, uh, Tom, no, not Tom, we don't got no Tom. We got uh, Leroy, <laughs> we got uh, SMA, Skillet. we got Tequana, <laughs> Shaquana, <laughs> Ray Ray, everybody to come out and go be there Thursday. There is a, a underlining message or a hidden message behind this. If you got somebody sponsoring this, like a New York life, then y'all going and we got to show New York life that we want it just as bad as everybody else so they can continue to right. do it. So let's go out and do it. Is that good? That's how bad I want it. Shawana, Tawana, Taekwon, Ray Ray, Shanique, right. all y'all, all us. <laughs> Come on. Thursday, December the 15th. And let's show and let's learn and let's have Maggie Anderson to uh, 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 show us what buying black looks like. Is that cool? That's good. All right. That's it. All right. That's All right. it. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Thank you. <laughs>